And from the national headquarters of RT America in our nation's capital. Hello again, everybody. I'm Rick Sanchez. So tonight we begin with a question. How many times haven't we seen our own military leaders complain about our enemy not fighting fairly? The popular term that comes to mind is human shields, where our enemies may use civilian entities, say a hospital, for example, to hide what is really a military operation. Here, do you remember this? I'm here to tell you that it was a military bunker. It was a command and control facility. Can you tell us what you think went wrong if, in fact, it's true that hundreds of civilians were killed? Well, from a military point of view, uh, nothing went wrong. The target was struck as designated. Uh, from a personal point of view, I'm outraged that, that uh, civilians might have been placed in harm's way. I think you all know that we sincerely regret any uh, damage or any deaths caused to the civilian population. We've done everything we can to avoid that. Our forces, I think, have done an excellent job of targeting military targets and avoiding uh, collateral damage to non-military targets. Cheney suggested Saddam Hussein may have consciously chosen to mingle civilians with military targets. Those were the days, huh? It seems like we were so innocent back then. That was from the Persian Gulf War, where the term human shield was first coined. And since then, our military leaders have made the accusation repeatedly. As well they should, by the way. After all, there's a military code of conduct that uh, strictly forbids the use of civilians or civilian entities as a shield. And, and this is important. In fact, here it is in black and white. We found it from the Geneva Convention. Protocol 1 of the Geneva Convention states, quote, the presence or movement of a civilian population or individual civilians shall not be used to render certain points or areas immune from military operations, in particular in attempts to shield, shield military objectives from attacks. Even in the hell of war, as Sherman aptly described, those of us who remember our Civil War history, there are rules, and there should be rules. Because once you use, for example, a hospital as a cover or as a shield, then what's to stop your enemy from bombing every single hospital in your country and then saying, well, that's where you guys were hiding last time. So now to the reason that we are leading our show with the question of human shields, in case you're wondering, which in the case that we're about to present to you, it's not about hospitals. It's about airliners, passenger airliners filled with people. Who would be accused of doing such a thing, you ask? Well, the answer may surprise you. But here's what will probably not surprise you. It will not surprise you that this story is not one that you'll see in the mainstream news. CNN and Fox won't tell you about this kind of story. We will. This is RT America, where we do believe, by golly, that it is time to do real news again. This question of human shields is so important that we wanted to bring it to you now. So here it is. It's a tactic we know has been used by terrorists in the past, as we have correctly called them out on it, right? But what if this time, what if this time the perpetrator of this violation was not the Taliban and it wasn't, uh, uh, what are they called, Al-Qaeda or ISIS, but rather our top ally? That's right. Tonight, Israel is being accused of using airliners as cover or masks uh, to mask the approach of its own warplanes as they bombed Damascus on Christmas Day. These masks, according to a respected and credible news site, consisted of two civilian airliners who were making their approaches into airports. Fortunately, the Syrian Arab Air Defense Forces in this case made the decision to delay the deployment of surface-to-air missiles, and they did not shoot down the airliners. But just think about this for a moment. Imagine just how crazy dangerous the idea of using airliners as shields would be. Something that Israel itself, by the way, responsibly recognizes. I'm going to read to you what it says in Israel's own manual of the rules of war. Here it is. We're going to put it up on this big wall for you. There is a serious prohibition on the use of civilians as human shields. It is prohibited to scatter military targets among civilian installations in an attempt to prevent an attack on them. 
And here now we have more. We looked into this today. Here's Israel's own court. It's high court establishing just how wrong this is. This goes back to a 2005 decision. Quote, it is clear that an army is not permitted to use local residents as a human shield. Residents, passengers on an airliner, same thing, right? So is Israel in violation of its own laws and its own protocols that we just read to you? We wanted to know more about this story. So we've asked our lead correspondent, Michelle Greenstein, to look into this for us because, well, it's, it, you know, it's a controversial issue and we want to drill down as much as we possibly can. So Michelle joins us now. What'd you find out? So these airlines were on their way to Beirut and Damascus. The Russian Ministry of Defense was able to use radar imaging to show that Israel used schedules mm -hmm. of airport departures and arrivals to trick Syrian air defenses. And now, of course, many are saying, what, all civilian aircrafts are now at risk? Anyone going in and out of Beirut or in and out of Damascus is now in danger. Exactly. As, you know, I, I don't know if you heard me, but at the beginning of the show I said, well, it used to be that we would say don't use hospitals as shields because right. then we will say or the country will say, well, I'm just going to bomb all the hospitals then. If you use a, a airliner as a cover, does it not preclude the thought process then, or involve the thought process, I should say, that they would possibly shoot down airliners? That's scary. Right, it's such a slippery slope. And let's talk about Israel's defense. Israel has actually acknowledged this incident, and they say that the airstrikes were intended to destroy a shipment of Iranian-made rockets that were on their way to Hezbollah. As for intentionally putting civilians in harm's way, I did reach out to IDF, mm -hmm. media department, and I did reach out to the Israeli embassy. As of right now, as of airtime, we have yet to receive a response. But the executive director for the Council for National Interest, Philip Giraldi, did write about this. He wrote about this incident. He's a former CIA case officer and a former Army intelligence officer, mm -hmm. and he has spent 20 years on the ground working terrorism cases overseas. He writes that this is a violation of Lebanese airspace by Israel and that Israel meets the UN definition of an aggressor because Israel is not at war with Syria, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the fact that Israel is bombing Syria, that in itself is not so notable. Israel has bombed Syria over 200 times. But I asked him whether or not he thought the fact that they endangered two passenger jets to be a big deal and whether he saw Israel facing any consequences on the national international stage. Let's take a look. One would think it's a big deal using civilian airliners because many of us use civilian airliners. But the, the fact is that this was barely covered at all in the United States. I, I think that the, the phenomenon of, of Israeli influence in Washington is largely done out in the open. I think it's, uh, it's essentially a very powerful lobby, which has a great deal of influence over congressmen because it, it contributes to their campaigns. And also the uh, same thing goes for the media, where the Israeli government has very good access to major media outlets in the United States. Well, some, you know, I, I heard him say that it didn't get a lot of coverage. Some people may be watching our newscast say, well, uh, maybe the reason it didn't get a lot of coverage, Michelle and Rick, is because it's not a legitimate story. After all, you know, it, it, CNN's not covering it, Fox is not covering it, NBC's not covering it, so maybe it's not a legitimate story. What would you say to them? Well, that's a great question to be asking, but the Washington Post did run a story on it, and a lot of other online publications have as well. Credible. Credible, very credible. I mean, Washington Post, some people would say that that is a very yeah. credible organization. Okay. Um, and, you know, it was all over Arab media. I just think it wasn't wall-to-wall -wall Western corporate media coverage. I didn't see any broadcast news on it. So, of course, CNN is not doing it. And Giraldi's credible. Giraldi's Very the credible. Real deal. Yes, and like I said, he's a former CIA case officer as well. Um, but what's important to note is that this is not the first time Israel has used civilian or non military aircraft as cover. In mid September, Israel used a Russian intelligence plane as a mask, and there were actual fatalities there after the Syrian air defenses responded to that attack. Again, Israel says that this was because weapon systems from Iran were being transferred to Hezbollah. And as a result, Interestingly enough, the Russian military announced that it was now going to supply Syria with the S-300 air defense system. So in theory, this is, like you said in the beginning, mm -hmm. a very slippery slope and that this would be condemned by the U.N. Security Council. But of course, we know this is not going to happen because America has veto power and it's not a forum that's going to be used to hold Israel 
um, in yeah. check. In other words, the rules are not the same as with everybody else when it comes to Israel. Correct. And uh, we Israel gets a lot of political cover from Washington but as this well. This would be good to hold them accountable here because Israeli citizens fly on planes as well. Right. This and is you, not about blaming and Israel. And they are constantly this is, saying, right, oh, Hamas is using human issue. shields. Everyone, it, it, this would really seem to fall in line with our values and with Israel's values. You're absolutely correct. And that's important. Uh, hey, good stuff. Great reporting. Thank you for digging on Thank this. Thank you. Yeah. I think it's important for us to be able to tell these stories like this. Agreed. For the Thank good you. of all. Hey, YouTube. Thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.